Today we're going to look at the entire story of Clarence from the YouTube channel, Jartoon. Now, let's get started. <laughs> Clarence is one of the most underrated kids' cartoons of the 2010s, but there's no doubt it left its mark on kids around the world in its short three-season lifespan. Even with only three seasons, we got a boatload of stuff to cover today. So, without further ado, let's cover the show's history from start to end. So settle down, grab that popcorn, and smash subscribe. It's gonna be a good one. Clarence theme song goes hard. Before we begin, let's get some context. This is Clarence. He's a hyper-optimistic 10-year-old boy who goes to school at Aberdale Elementary, all the way down in Arizona. He also has a tendency to be a bit dim-witted. I'll say. Clarence has got two best friends as well, Sumo and Jeff. Jeff is a brainy germaphobe who's high in intelligence and a bit high on himself as well. His name is Minecraft Steve, sir. While Sumo is, well, he's Sumo. A bald, crazy, wild card of a kid who's as crafty as he is unpredictable. I'm surprised he wasn't raised by wolves. He's also hilarious to watch. There's also a bunch of other characters that we'll get into later down the line. But for now, let's jump into the show with our very first episode, The Pilot. This episode shows us Clarence's first day at school after moving into town. I forgot how different the teacher looked in the pilot. As he gives all his classmates invitations to a sleepover at his place, where they'll bust open a mystery pinata. However, one of the students, Belson, isn't keen on the idea, crumples the invitation, and kicks it at Clarence. That is cold. <laughs> what a douche. After Clarence's mom says she'll be out for the night, Jeff shows up and introduces himself to Clarence, but he just wants to play along with trivia TV shows. Sumo arrives shortly after, and well, now we know how Sumo went bald. That was his canon event. Imagine the first thing you do with a friend is shave their head. That is so strange. Sumo and Clarence try and get Jeff in on some of the fun, but he's put off by their germs more so than anything. The rock music they play did lure Clarence's mom's boyfriend, Chad, out of his room, though. He is definitely something else. Chad is based. After a prank phone call to the cops, yeah, that's a great idea, they bust open the pinata, and turns out the mystery was Honestly, I have so many questions. How did they even get them in there? The cops show up to stop a fictional flaming burglar that Sumo talked about on the phone. The boys run from being chased by the bees, and everything goes to chaos. Thankfully, though, everyone had fun, even Jeff. In the next episode, Fun Dungeon Face-Off, the boys go to Rough Rider's Chicken, and Jeff is being a bit lame. He only wants the fries, and won't even go into the playground with Sumo and Clarence because of how many germs are crawling in there. My Quest Thief has a point. Jeff's kid's meal comes with a girl toy too, of course. The guys start pigging out, and when Clarence tries to take one of Jeff's fries, he freaks out. Honestly, Jeff doesn't seem unreasonable here. I mean, look at how filthy that hand is. Jeff goes to the bathroom after making Clarence promise not to take his fries. I want you to promise me. Make a solemn promise, you will not touch my fries. And right as he does, Clarence does the unthinkable and takes the fries. He only shoves them in his back pocket, though, and hopes he can trick Jeff into playing with him. When Jeff realizes his fries are gone, he rushes after Sumo and Clarence, tossing Sumo like it's nothing and targeting Clarence like he's about to kill the guy. Must be some good fries to freak out like that. The two get on top of the playground in a pretty dangerous fight and bring it back to a slide where Clarence fesses up and shows he never ate the fries. Jeff explains he has reasons for not doing things that Clarence will never understand, but realizes just then that he did go into the playground after all. The two shake hands, which is big for Jeff, trust me, and become friends once more. As for Sumo, he ended up making a friend himself, Jeff's girl toy. But tragically, he leaves it at the playground. That's absolutely heartbreaking. In the episode of Pretty Great Day with a Girl, we're introduced to Amy. Hey, Clarence. Who invites Clarence on a bike ride to find an erratic. I remember her. Amy Gillis, right? Which is a rock unlike any other rocks from a certain area. The more you know. They head off to find it. But Belson catches the two riding a bike together and goes to blab about it to his friend Nathan. They tell some other guys and get a gossip train going, and eventually follow Clarence and Amy, who end up discovering the erratic. Amy tells Clarence she may be moving next year and doesn't know which parent she'll be with. And so Clarence tells her he had a time where he didn't have a dad, but now he is Chad, who, yeah, is apparently Clarence's kinda stepdad. 
the other boys show up and try and claim the rock for their own. With Belson and everyone else jealous of Clarence for hanging out with a girl, Amy has to head home. And so the Pinecone War is over. See you guys later. Thanks for the battle. And the boys share sandwiches to close the episode out. Pretty fun one. Don't know how Sumo manages to show up considering nobody even talked to him about the girl scenario. But whatever. Sumo's awesome and deserves a sandwich. He's best boy. In the episode Clarence's Millions, we see a bit more of Aberdale Elementary, and in particular, how Miss Baker's class works. As a reward system for the class, Miss Baker uses buddy stars to punish and reward people. Clarence and Sumo have bad numbers, while Jeff has the most stars in the class. After noticing that they make his classmates sad, Clarence makes his own system to replace buddy stars and creates Clarence dollars, which he's not afraid to hand out willy-nilly, at least until Jeff talks him out of the idea entirely. Sumo takes the excess dollars and distributes them the next day, though, and so Clarence's dream finally becomes a reality. Ah, nothing like going for a morning swim. With Buddy Star's strict rules being replaced by the leniency of Clarence dollars. The next day, though, Clarence wakes up to find the school has gone rabid for the dollars. And so Jeff convinces Clarence to flood the market and devalue the dollar to the point where it's useless. And lo and behold, it works. Chad ends up with all the money, too. Okay, that's funny. Which was traded for freeze pops by Sumo. Pretty good investment there. In the next episode, we meet Ashley, another classmate of Clarence. She's peer pressured by her friends to ask Clarence out. Hey, Clarence. What? Do you want to be my boyfriend? And Clarence awkwardly accepts. And so, it seems Clarence has a girlfriend now. So I guess I have a girlfriend now. What? Sumo decides to help Clarence prepare for his date by getting him some clothes at the thrift store, while Jeff slinks around stalking them because he's so jealous. The two force Jeff to try and make Clarence interesting for his date, too. He says I need to download a plugin. No, no, click no. Yes. Yeah, after whatever that was, Jeff hands Clarence some icebreakers and he's off for his date. He meets Ashley at a pizza place and goes a bit overboard for her first date. And eventually, Ashley admits she was uncomfortable with the idea to begin with. And so, the two decide to just be friends and go catch frogs behind the school. See, that is a real date idea. In the episode Dinner Party, Clarence and his parents head over to his friend Green's house for a dinner party. The kids get their own table, and after they're done eating, they explore the house. All right, pack your things, gentlemen. We got some exploring to do. But the attic is off limits. The kids and Chad, who's basically a kid, all explore the basement and eventually decide to check out the attic, which they instantly fall through. Sumo's dad figures out a way to make sure nobody but Breen's family themselves pay for it due to threats of legal action. I don't know. Looks like some faulty construction there, Walt. And everyone is happy. I love Sumo's dad's accent. Because apparently Breen's family are a bunch of jerks. Also, in the previous episode, Jeff's New Toy, we find out that Jeff's last name is Randall, in the title card of all places. It's on the return label of the box and a blank, and you'll miss it sort of thing. That's a nice little Easter egg. Also, another detail. When Jeff goes to get Sumo in the middle of the night, Sumo punches him right as he wakes up. Sumo, it's your <laughs> It seems trivial, but there's a payoff, I promise. In the episode Zoo, Clarence's class goes on a field trip to, you guessed it, the zoo. And Clarence's travel buddy is Belson. They have a worksheet to do for the class and a strict schedule to follow, but Belson just doesn't care whatsoever. So he and Clarence walk off to go on their own adventure. Breen has an allergic reaction to a peanut butter sandwich, and so the trip ends early. But Belson and Clarence are left behind because they separated earlier. When Clarence, concerned with how Belson has been negative the whole time, asks him of something he actually likes, he says dolphins. And so the two head off to search for them. They find them, and the two actually bond and become buddies for a moment, before they're caught by a night guard and are picked up by Miss Baker. He did it! I don't know the guy! He did everything! I didn't want to come here! Snitch. In the episode Dream Boat, Sumo gets detention and is referred to as Mr. Sumowski by a teacher named Mr. Reese. So what's Sumo's real name then? Change has to start with you, Mr. Sumowski. We then learn more about Sumo's family life, and with him living in a trailer with a pretty packed family. He's got a ton of brothers, and so doesn't get much attention. And when he realizes his dad wants a boat, Sumo decides to make one for him himself. He works tirelessly, and even shrugs off his friends to get the job done. But when he finally snaps and realizes he can't do it himself, he lets Clarence and Jeff in on the project. Oh my god! Hello! I made it sound like we were having so much fun. <laughs> I am having fun. They complete the boat and set sail, and even float for a few seconds before it sinks. 
That's unfortunate. Luckily, Sumo's dad helps the guys get it out of the water, and he actually was able to bond with Sumo over the experience. That's sweet. That's such a sweet one, honestly. In the episode Nature Clarence, the boys, alongside Percy, the little kid who you may have noticed in a few episodes now, go on a hike to find a hot spring. And someone named Nature Kate, who isn't a fan of this guy Joshua, who's supposedly her boyfriend, a lot of names, I know. He looks like Bob Ross. Sumo runs off, and the others are left to walk back to where they started. They find some shelter, complete with a hot tub, but Josh nearly falls off a cliff. If you just believe in nature, then nature will... Nature Kate and Sumo arrive and save everyone, and Josh decides he's more cut out for grocery stores than nature, and the two break up. Josh is an interesting character. He gets mauled by a goat. That's fun. In Average Jeff, we start off with Jeff's morning routine, which is a callback to American Psycho of all things. I stay on routine, on schedule. He's a sigma. Good lord. I never quite connected the dots between Jeff and Patrick Bateman, but here we are. Oh, also, his last name of Randall is confirmed in this one by Jeff himself. It wasn't just some dumb detail like many may think. Anywho, Miss Baker's class gets the results of their standardized test back, with groups being set up between those who did well and those who didn't. Turns out, Jeff didn't do well, and he won't believe it. He's super unhappy in the other class, which is run by Miss Shoop, and tries to get Miss Baker to let him take the test again. But it's out of her control anyway, and so he heads back to the other class, where he finally snaps. He sneaks in while looking deranged, and just acts like he's always been there, before he's dragged out by Mr. Reese. He has an utterly crazy dream, <laughs> but wakes up to find the binder that has the standardized test scores. We can see Clarence scored the lowest, with Sumo actually scoring a decent bit higher than him. Breen and Chelsea have the highest scores, and right in the middle is Jeff who's perfectly average, which he's actually happy with. Too bad they go back to normal by the end of it all. Well, almost normal. You best keep on moving. In the episode Too Gross for Comfort, we get to know Chelsea, another classmate of Clarence's who's been in the background of a few episodes. Clarence brings her over to the guy's treehouse, aka the guy scraper. That's an excellent name. And so the others try and come up with the grossest thing possible to scare her away, with Sumo being the head of the whole campaign. They try a bunch of increasingly weird tactics, but Chelsea manages to get through each one with no challenge. The guys then start telling stories to gross her out, but nothing works. Even Sumo's story doesn't phase her, but Chelsea's story doesn't phase Sumo either, and so they keep trying to one-up each other until they kiss, grossing everyone out. Jesus Christ including themselves once they come to the realization of what just happened. What a weird one. In the next episode, we actually get to see what the guys look like while they're super old. They're reminiscing about when they first met, and so they basically just recap the pilot episode. This time, though, there's an added pinata song, and it's a certified classic, let me tell ya. The episode ends off with the revelation that none of the guys have their legs anymore. That's a weird detail. And they live in the same world as the Jetsons, which is even weirder. What goes on in the future? In the episode Patience, Clarence and his mom head to the doctor's office, where we learn their last name is Wendell. Other than that tidbit, this episode is typical Clarence affair. He wants candy, but his mom says he can only have it after the doctor's appointment if he behaves. No! He tries to entertain himself while waiting and honestly goes insane in the process. He imagines himself in a candy world, where he meets a bunch of candy people who teach him to melt. Yeah, I have no explanation. Clarence as a little girl give him her candy, but then decides to whine about it. Her mom gets angry, the candy is taken away. Clarence tries to steal the jar, but breaks it, and yoinks some candy as his mom, who apparently is mad that she can't get in to see anyone, drags him out. <laughs> In the episode of Rough Riders Elementary, the guys try a new sauce from Rough Riders, but Clarence isn't a fan. Remember the fast food place from the second episode? That's Rough Riders. That's not the only thing Rough Riders has going on that's bad, though, as it seems they're taking over the school. Oh, and Josh is the spokesperson for Rough Riders. And my close personal friend, Josh Ilua. And yeesh, that goat did a number on him. Clarence is a fan of the food place sponsoring the school at first, but notices something is off when Josh refers to the school as Rough Riders Elementary instead of Aberdale Elementary. Did he not notice how class subjects are all food related now? Or the literal brainwashed students? Also, we finally learn Sumo's real name, which is, drumroll please, 
Ryan. Just Ryan. Ryan Samowski. Hi, Ryan. Okay. Clarence figures out the school is being turned into an actual Rough Riders restaurant. And the way they're controlling everyone is the sauce. Which, remember, Clarence doesn't like. Clarence saves Sumo before he's indoctrinated into some Rough Riders cult and escape the school. Right before Nature Kate and some other action heroes show up and blow up the school. So, yeah, this was all just a class presentation by Clarence to explain why he likes Rough Riders so much. The Ryan Samowski thing is canon, though, so at least we learned that. In the episode Nothing Ventured, Mr. Samowski and Chad decide to start a business together, and Sumo and Clarence want to invest in it so they can make money, but realize they actually need to make money to invest first. Chad, sour cream and onion ice cream. Chad, sour cream and onion keyboard cream. Eventually, Clarence gets an idea and goes to see Sumo in the middle of the night who again throws punches when he wakes up. See? I told you there was a payoff. Oh, and Clarence's ideas is to get crickets, by the way. Back to Chad and Mr. Samowski, they're still getting ideas for their store. But we learn Chad was in a really weird band at some point. The boys go into a restaurant and grab cockroaches, which they mistake for crickets, while Mr. Samowski gives up on the store. Sumo and Clarence decide to help put people to sleep with the cricket noise by placing crickets in their house at night. And well, you can guess where this is going. An outbreak starts in Aberdale, and the adults start an exterminating business, before Mr. Samowski once again ditches the business. The only winners here are the roaches. In the episode Bedside Manners, Clarence goes to visit Belson in the hospital, who's got a bunch of broken bones after getting run over. Good. Belson isn't into the visit at all. There's a body in my room! There's a body in here! even with a giant sub being involved. Thanks to Jeff freaking out, we also find out that Belson's last name is Knowles. And we also find out, thanks to a dream, that yeah, Belson wasn't kidding when he said he likes dolphins. Also, another fun fact, the name Belson Knowles is actually a reference to one of the show's main writers, Nelson Bowles. Crazy, huh? Anyway, Belson was lying about getting run over too. As it turns out, it was a prank gone wrong. He was trying to change the channel through the roof while Clarence was watching a show, but he fell off and well, now he's here. Here. Clarence decides to prank Belson back though, and wheels him out to a fountain to get him wet, but ends up getting both himself and Belson hurt in the process, so they got a room together. Yikes, that is not fun for Belson. In the episode Hurricane Dillis, we meet Clarence's grandma Dillis, who comes to her daughter's house unannounced. Also, she's talking about someone named Damien, who's supposedly an ex of Miss Wendell, who's also revealed to be named Mary. Again, lot of new info to take in. Dillis is a talker, and a big one at that, and also a bit of a control freak, as she jabs a spork into Chad's hands at one point while he's holding a dragon sword. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there either, but don't question it. She scares Clarence into sleeping with his parents, and then stalks them outside. She needs to leave. The worst part is, nobody knows when she's leaving. Ugh. Even Clarence's friends don't like her. Like, good gosh, man, she's so obnoxious. Chad buys a car because Dillis disapproves of him not owning one. She walks in on Mary showering, and she wrecks the house while trying to fix it. Mary rightfully goes the hell off on Dillis, until Seymour, Mary's dad, walks in and saves the day by taking her home. Good lord, I don't know how I'd live in a family with her. That man has patience. Oh my god. In the episode Herons, Clarence gets a summer job at his mom's barber shop, where he ends up sweeping the floors. Meanwhile, Chad does sign spinning outside, and his mom works her magic, even figuring out a way to make a bald motorcyclist happy. <laughs> but one person she can never make happy is Sandy, who always comes in, complains, treats the staff horribly, and then leaves. One day, Clarence gets fed up with her routine. Clarence decides to give her the hair he's been sweeping outside all summer, and Sandy isn't happy, but ends up getting wheeled out by her own clumsiness and she never returned again. Interesting. Well, now we know how Clarence's family makes their money, I guess. In the episode The Big PD Pizza Problem, Jeff's having a birthday party at a bowling place, and everyone is terrible, except for Gilbin, a classmate who's having a party that same day. He bowls a perfect game, and he's, well, I don't even know if he's human. He looks like a Poppy's Playtime character. Jeff's friends go over to Gilbin's because he has bumpers up on his lane and also because he has more pizza, leaving Jeff alone. Yeesh, kids can be kind of heartless. When Gilbin steals his thunder, Jeff does what Jeff always does and goes crazy, fighting Gilbin and hitting a strike through his cake. All while Gilbin doesn't say anything or move an inch. 
After a while, Jeff heads in to apologize, and Gilbin accepts, handing Jeff his own cake. Everyone laughs, and Gilbin remains as still as a statue. In the next episode, it finally happens. The gang splits up. After Sumo ruins Jeff's stop-motion movie and Jeff breaks all of Sumo's eggs, the two end their friendship. They each have separate playdates with Clarence after, causing Clarence to start losing energy due to hanging out way too much. I know, Clarence losing energy? That's crazy, right? So yeah, Clarence decides for everyone's sake, he's gotta get the two back together. After failing to have the two show up for a spaghetti dinner, Clarence talks to each of them, and neither seem to be handling things too well. Clarence ties Sumo up and brings him to Jeff's, and handcuffs everyone together to try and become friends. Sumo breaks everyone free by biting through the freaking handcuffs. What is that kid made of? Sumo's a mutant. And Clarence gets caught by a tree on the way down. His pants fall down too, causing Sumo and Jeff to laugh together, and so the two become friends again. We knew this would probably happen eventually, but I'm glad it was sorted out. In the episode Bird Boy Man, it's shown that Sumo is taking care of some baby birds and nursing them to adulthood. That's so sweet. However, one of the birds, named Hot Sauce of course, follows him to school. And so, he heads over to the old truck he stashed them in to put him back, only to find everyone else had gone off. Sumo takes the bird home and focuses entirely on parenting it, even ditching school, which his mom isn't happy about. Sumo's mom looks like she could be a carrot on King of the Hill. After a while, the guys check in on Sumo and are introduced to Hot Sauce, but he's definitely more of a bird than a friend. Sumo tries to take him out on the town, but things don't go well, and eventually Hot Sauce wants to be set free, but Sumo won't let him go. The guys convince him to let Hot Sauce fly into nature, but only after he's dragged off a cliff and breaks his foot. So yeah, now Clarence and Jeff have to nurse Sumo back to health. In the next episode, Miss Baker decides to have Clarence make a comic for the school paper, which is run by Belson. Oh, also, Gilbin's beating buff dudes in arm wrestling. It's good to know. Clarence brainstorms for a while, even making a Garfield ripoff before making a strip about a cactus that farts. And of course, it's a massive success. Ain't that funny? Miss Shoop doesn't find it funny though, and anonymously calls the teacher in charge of the paper, Mr. Reese, to complain like a parent. Mr. Reese decides the only thing he can do to save the school from a media firestorm is to censor the cactus and make it say, stay in school, causing all the paper readers to turn on Clarence. Man, he really got Greg Heffley in this one. Major Diary of a Wimpy Kid vibes. Mr. Reese, who's in disguise, inspires Clarence to protest, and Miss Shoop is still the only one who hates it. She takes a microphone and yells into it, before accidentally farting into it herself, which Clarence thankfully blames on the cactus he's been holding. The school allows the comic to continue, and the day shines a little bit brighter now that cacti have the right to fart. Beautiful episode. In the episode Saturday School, the guys make a mural on the side of the school, which causes them to have to stay at school for the weekend and clean the place. Jeff kind of gets lost in the work, so Sumo and Clarence go and find some fun, which for them is easy in the completely empty school. Jeff ended up losing Herman, the school hermit crab, while cleaning Miss Baker's room, and so the three of them have to clean their mess to find Herman. Miss Baker finds the mess first, though, and stresses out big time over it. Thankfully, after a brief scare, Herman is found and returned to his tank, and the mural still isn't cleaned. Well, in the episode Attack the Block Party, Clarence thinks he sees an alien, which turns out to just be Belson flying a drone. Clarence, while searching, finds a rave and thinks it's the aliens, and so he hops a fence and gets talking to some teenagers who he still thinks are aliens. They're not aliens, but they do get high. Jeff and Sumo are looking into it as well, also thinking the teens are aliens. And of course, Sumo bolts right into the rave. A bunch more teen party chaos goes on. Jeff gets a sample of an alien. Clarence wows some teens with just nonsense alien imagination, and Sumo is surprisingly a hit with the ladies. Jeff eventually tries to save Sumo, who's surrounded, and sprays a hose throughout the house until he's kicked out. Him and Clarence each head home scared, while Sumo gets a ride home from one of the girls. Go Sumo, who'd have guessed? In Skater Sumo, Chelsea, again kind of half flirting, half annoying, gets Sumo alongside Clarence to skate with her, and so the guys start making their own boards. Careful now. 
Those are my good beans. When they're done, they go to Chelsea, but Sumo thinks Clarence isn't extreme enough and gets him to stay home. When he and Chelsea get to where she's taking him, it turns out to be an empty pool. But the stunts she and her friend do aren't very extreme, and so Sumo starts to feel bad. Clarence does show up right after, though, and while trying to pull off a super dangerous trick, accidentally blows his skate just in time to have the wheels fall off. They keep doing super safe skating stuff. And nobody gets hurt, except for the pool, which turns out to be Belson's. He's pretty occupied with his dolphin game, though. Dolphins again? All right, good to know. He really likes them. In the next episode, the guys are prank calling, but Clarence stumbles upon a girl named Bella who's doing the same thing while calling. Just kidding, I'm not really an alien, I'm Bella. And the two instantly become friends, talking for the rest of the day. Clarence invites her for dinner, too, which ends up just being the phone sitting at the table because, yeah, that's, that's exactly how that works. Sumo and Jeff invite Clarence to go sledding down a hill, but he can't go just yet as he's on the phone with Bella. Eventually, he dazes off on a call with her, and she hangs up kinda passive-aggressively. Clarence forgets her birthday, too, and tries to call last minute, but to no avail, as he clogs her voicemail box. It's Bella's mom who actually hears Clarence's voicemails, and so her mom and Clarence's mom set up a play date for the two, where they finally meet. They're shy at first, but eventually figure out their dynamic and actually hold hands, too. This one is pretty sweet. Uh. In the episode Jeff's Secret, Clarence learns that Jeff has an extra toe, but he keeps it super duper secret and wants to keep Clarence quiet. We also see Jeff's parents, and he's actually got two moms. Ah, oh, that's cool. Anyway, Jeff is hyper paranoid that Clarence is gonna blab, or that someone is gonna find out about his secret somehow. And eventually, Clarence comes pretty close. A video comes on and talks about how koalas have extra toes to hold on to stuff, and Miss Baker asks a quiz question to see if people were paying attention. Clarence answers Jeff when asked about an animal with an extra toe. All right, I'm But nobody except Jeff understands that that was an actual answer. Jeff gets mad, and Clarence decides to try and make it up to him by having the school think he has an extra arm. After that, everyone shows off their weird features, and Jeff shows off his toe finally. Everyone accepts him and is amazed, until Nathan shows his double jointed and he takes all the attention. For Clarence, Jeff's toe is still his favorite weird thing though, and so Jeff gets rid of his toe cap. See, celebrating differences is the key to happiness, and Mr. Reese is eating the cap. Wait, what? Is a toe cap a thing? In the episode Birthday, it's Clarence's birthday party, and Sumo and Jeff get a little peeved when everyone from Miss Baker's class shows up, meaning Clarence can't spend as much time with him. When it's time to open presents, Sumo and Jeff are last in line, and their gifts of throwing grease and pie are overshadowed by everything else Clarence got, especially his brand new bike from his parents. They leave with their presents, and Clarence realizes he's been ignoring them, and so he rides off to find them right as they're about to toss their gifts at a rock. The three make up and head back to the party, where Chad has been entertaining everyone as a clown in the meantime. Just one they're more. Clarence wraps up and reopens his bike so Jeff and Sumo can be involved, and Chad gets set on fire. A happy ending for everybody. In the next episode, we actually get to see a flashback of a very young Chad climbing a tree with his friends so that they could carve their names into it and be best friends forever, which of course, Sumo, Jeff, and Clarence want to do too. Unfortunately though, the carving tree is being removed the next day due to a fungus. Dang. So before it's gone, Clarence gets Sumo and Jeff to head to the tree, and the three make the treacherous climb. At the middle point, Jeff and Sumo fight over who's the better climber, before deciding to continue higher up. Sumo sacrifices himself so the other two can climb on. And then Jeff sacrifices himself so Clarence can climb on. Clarence gets to the top, and the tree speaks to him, where Clarence then realizes he doesn't need to carve his name in a tree for the three to be friends forever. But the tree doesn't like that he's figured that out, and trips him, causing him to fall off. Luckily, he's caught by Chad's friends, who he called to catch up with after he told Clarence his story. And together, everyone watches the tree get torn down. Also, yeah, the tree was never as big as it seemed. Oh, the power of imagination. In the next episode, we've got a two-parter called Cat.
capture the flag, with the kids of Aberdale are split into teams to play the titular game. Clarence looks to be pretty great at the game, protecting his teammate from getting hot by a water balloon. And Chelsea distracts the other team so the fairy team's flag can be stolen by Julian, another classmate of Clarence's. Belson shows up with his team, who apparently win every year, and demand control of the neutral zone in the cul-de-sac alongside the juice boxes within it. Another team, the Wheelies, also show up to grab some juice, but are obviously scared of Belson, so yeah, he means business. Clarence and the other members of the Nuggets head back to their base, which is, of course, the treehouse, and figure they just need the Wheelie flag and Belson's flag to win. So after a brief bit of planning, they head to the Wheelie's base. Also, Jeff is having a lovely time in the Nuggets jail. I'm not kidding. Clarence sneaks around and notices some of the other team members in jail, and so he decides to free them because they seem sad. Chelsea and Julian almost got the flag of the wheelies, but an evil mysterious new team, which apparently isn't run by Belson, shows up and takes the flag, with the Nuggets barely escaping. Belson isn't so lucky. Clarence's new goal is to free all people who are in prison and leave the other Nuggets behind. They head to Belson's to grab his flag, but find he's been drenched and ask him what happened. He explains the other team belted him with balloons and says they take not just flags, but people. Then the mystery team arrives and barrages everyone with water balloons. These guys are ominous. You gotta wonder who's leading them to. Julian and Chelsea are brought to the scrapyard, and Belson is tied up to a bunch of flaming garbage where it's revealed that yes, Sumo is in charge of this mystery group. What a twist. He's tired of Belson always winning and always controlling the juice, and so vows that if people follow his demands, they'll get all the juice they want. And if they don't, they'll be tossed into jail. He wants to know where the nugget and furry flags are before Chelsea tosses a balloon at him, which he catches. Dang. Belson blabs and says the flags are at the treehouse. And so the juice freaks head off. They arrive and grab the flags. But Clarence's pacifist gang shows up and takes everyone out. jailing them and then immediately freeing them. Breen tells Clarence of where he can free a bunch of jailed kids, and so they head for Sumo's junkyard. Clarence arrives, and despite Sumo's pleas, frees everyone from jail. And peace is achieved, until Chad shows up who wants in, and so all the kids gang up on him, and then just go nuts. Clarence frees Belson, who then explains he replaced all the flags with decoys at the start of the game and he has them all himself, meaning he's still the king. And so, all the kids ambush him to end the episode off. This water balloon war will go down in history books for sure. In the episode Pizza Hero, it's an end of school assembly and awards are being handed out. But all the kids can think about is how local legend Papa Mariano is said to be there to hand out pizza and put on a show. Okay, now for the award for best active reading, whatever that means, yeah. Brain. Everyone goes on about stories with him, with Clarence being saved by him, and Miss Baker getting consoled by him after a breakup. Also, that picture of her ex? Remember that face. Trust me, Percy had him fix his bike, and Sumo almost had a watermelon blow up in his face. But thanks to Papa Mariano falling from the sky, he was saved. What was he even doing there? All right, I'm with Jeff and starting to think that this is ridiculous. Jeff figures out that everything the guy has been doing has either been misremembered or misunderstood. He taught me about pie charts. He taught Chad about pie charts, too. But the oddest thing of all being Mariano's stalking of Miss Baker. He's kinda got a point. Jeff realizes he's bummed everyone out, and Clarence wants to know why he hates Papa Mariano, which turns out to be because the cheese of Jeff's pizza fell into his lap as a kid. That's not his fault, it's yours, Steve. That's an overreaction to the greatest degree. Papa arrives, and everyone rushes to the outside, but he apparently was in the bleachers cheering Jeff on. Hooray, Jeff! Jeff is a winner! Everyone turns around to see him, and it turns out to be a dummy. And then Jeff turns out to be Papa, with the real Jeff storming in saying he's late. So what the heck is going on? Papa explains his actions by not explaining them at all, and then drops pizza on everyone. He slips and falls, breaking his back, but is clapped back to life in terrifying fashion. I never want to meet this man in my entire life. 
For the first episode of season three, we have Sumo Goes West. After the mayor just randomly draws new district lines, Sumo is forced to switch schools to West Aberdale Elementary alongside Gilbert. At least we don't have to see him anymore. But anywho, he and Clarence protest, and eventually Clarence decides to have just Sumo live with his family in the chicken shed so he doesn't have to switch. That obviously doesn't work out though. <laughs> And so Sumo gets dressed and ready to go to a new school, complete with a button-up. Dang, that's a change. Clarence tears a bit of the shirt while Jeff is wearing it and decides to try and destroy the street sign so nobody can tell where anyone lives by hijacking a bulldozer. Sumo convinces him to give the new scenario a try, and so he hops off the bulldozer and walks home. School is tough for Clarence, but Sumo comes over later and says they can always just play after school, which Clarence never thought of. We can still hang out after school. I did not think about that. The two figure things out a bit, and the new lifestyle begins. Also, the bulldozer is still going. In the next episode, Valentine's, it's Valentine's Day, and Clarence feels bad that Miss Baker doesn't have a Valentine. He invites her over to his place and gets Sumo to try and find a man for her, who he figures should be Mr. Moser, his teacher from Aberdale West Elementary. They hit it off, but when he realizes it's a date, Mr. Moser starts to panic a bit, and that's when Clarence decides to prepare dinner. Yikes. Mr. Moser doesn't take it well and spits all over Miss Baker, who's about to drive away until she backs into Mr. Moser. And so the two head back in to clean up. They both walk out and decide to go grab actual dinner together, while Clarence throws more of his meat hearts. What a weird kid. In Rock Show, Chad's back with his band. Remember how we saw that weird picture of him in Nothing Ventured? And they're about to have a concert. When they show up to the venue they're playing at, Mary finds a familiar face, Damien, an ex-boyfriend of hers, and yeah, also Miss Baker's. Remember who she was crying over in the Pizza Hero episode? So if you can't tell, he was a lady killer. Wow, that dude got around but is now a priest. Yeah, that's pretty random, but good for him, I guess. Also, we never do find out who Clarence's real dad is. So, I mean, maybe it's Damien. I don't know. Chad's band starts to play, and they get the audience on their side. especially when Clarence starts banging the drums, culminating in him jumping through them. Unfortunately, they were lent to him by the last band to play, and a riot breaks out. But Chad is still happy. Kinda happy ending there. Also, what kind of name is Dogmon for a band? Maybe I'm just still put off by that picture. Okay, so now we have a massive six episode storyline that I'm gonna try and run through as fast as possible. This here is Clarence's stormy sleepover, the highly condensed version. Clarence is trying to host the biggest sleepover ever and wants to invite everyone he knows, but nobody can show up. Clarence's mom tries to cheer him up and we can even see a callback to the farting cactus episode with her coffee mug. Nice touch. Clarence manages to convince Jeff to come through, so he heads off to get some last minute things until a giant hail and rainstorm breaks out. Jeff heads over on his own and arrives before Clarence does, and so everyone sets off to find him. Jeff flies a kite into the power line and knocks the grid out for the whole town. Boy. Just gonna... All right, part two time. Jeff's making sure nobody goes outside, as if they do, they may figure out the power outage is his fault. He does his best to make sure Clarence's parents don't go outside, but eventually gets self-conscious that Clarence is lost and it's his fault. And so, he and Clarence's parents head off to find him. Also, Percy is knocked into a river. Jeff eventually uses a hand puppet to channel Clarence, and through intuition alone, he realizes Clarence is on Main Street. Jeez, that's kinda scary, honestly. How do we not know it's not just Jeff having a breakdown again? Part 3 shows us what Suma's family was busy with before the storm. Doomsday prep. Okay. Also, Suma's got a badger friend. Good for him. Sumo stores the badger away so his dad doesn't find him and force him to leave him outside. But when the power goes out, and so Mr. Samowski immediately busts open the fallout shelter and brings everyone in, Sumo's badger gets loose, and so his dad kicks it out. And Sumo isn't happy, so his dad goes over to him later that night to apologize, but it's too late. He's already run out to look for the badger, so dad runs out after him. But the storm picks up and they're almost dragged into the air. But thankfully, the badger saves them all. Also, its name is Candace. Nice name. Candace runs off when she wakes up after being knocked out, and so Sumo and his dad go off to get her. His dad considers her family now that she's saved their lives. They hop in their secret monster truck and head out. Also, Percy is still floating in the storm. 
That can't be safe for the little guy. In part four, we see that Belson and Mr. Reese were at the school for detention during the storm. Belson pranks Mr. Reese by gluing binoculars to his face, and the two are tasked by Mrs. Shoup to go find Mrs. Baker, the safety officer of the school. Belson drives Mr. Reese and himself to Miss Baker's home, where the place is empty, so Belson figures she was robbed. Eventually, though, Belson finds a letter from Miss Baker's friends, congratulating her on her move to California. Ew, why would you move to California? What? At first, Belson doesn't tell Mr. Reese, but when he starts calling Belson out on his insecurities, he admits to him what's going on. What? She moved and she didn't say nothing? The two get past their differences and take Miss Shoup's car to California to get Miss Baker. Meanwhile, the Wendells and Jeff are still looking for Clarence, and their van is sunk by the storm. Mr. Reese and Belson arrive and offers them a lift, and the two parties merge. Oh, and they also save Percy. Thank goodness. They figure out Miss Shoup knew about Miss Baker leaving the whole time and head back, only for her to be jailing anyone who shows up to the gym. She explains she wants the gym to herself, and now that Miss Baker is gone, she has full reign over it. Until Miss Baker comes in over the teacher radio needing help. Belson and Mr. Reese head off for Miss Baker, but almost hit Candace, and the episode ends. <laughs> In part 5, we start off by seeing Clarence heading to the gas station to buy Jeff his favorite drink for the sleepover. Miss Baker is there too, and the mayor is attempting to shoplift. What an upstanding citizen. Typical politician. Clarence asks Miss Baker what she's doing, but she doesn't want to explain, and just as she's about to leave, the power goes out, and the doors won't open. Sumo and his dad also crash the monster truck outside, but they don't hear the others trapped, and so just walk off. Probably still looking for Candace, Clarence drops his walkie-talkie that he uses to talk to Jeff, and so apparently that's how Miss Baker got in touch with the teacher radio. Meanwhile, the gas station clerk, who knows Miss Baker and how she's leaving, gets fed up, and accidentally lets Clarence know Miss Baker is leaving. <laughs> they talk briefly, before they see the clerk outside replacing a poster. Turns out they're only locked inside because she needs to review security footage to make sure nobody stole anything. And so everyone fights her for the key out, but unsuccessfully. The clerk heads out one more time to replace another sign, and so Clarence grabs the key and flushes it, to make sure Miss Baker never leaves. Belson and Mr. Reese crash through the wall, and everyone, even the clerk, pile in to get to the gym. In the final part, part 6, the town is starting to flood, and everyone has made it to the gym. Clarence gets a big hug from his parents too, which is sweet. What's a sleepover without kids? <laughs> The place starts to flood though, and everyone panics, so Jeff decides to tell everyone about how he caused the outage. But turns out, he didn't. It's just that Aberdale has a bad electrical system that always fails during a big storm. Meanwhile, the mayor takes a helicopter and ditches the town. But Candace causes him to crash. Wow, what an awesome guy. The town goes to chaos in the gym. Great, so sweet to me, I just... And so Clarence gets Miss Baker to come in and calm everyone down. She has everyone build a wall to prevent the place from flooding. And at the last minute, Candace makes it over to reunite with Sumo. The town has a giant sleepover in the gym, and Miss Baker decides to stay. And that is Clarence's stormy sleepover. Good lord. All right, after that huge episode, let's get to the very last one. Anywhere but Sumo. After school one day, the boys meet up, and Sumo's got a full head of hair. After finding a couch outside and making it their own, Clarence talks with Sumo and says that tomorrow is his haircut versary. Cut my hair. The anniversary of when he shaved his head, and so he asks Sumo if he can shave him tomorrow, to which he gladly agrees. Clarence finds Sumo the next day on the couch, with his head already shaved by his Aberdale West friends, and Clarence is in shock, not even wanting to believe Sumo has other friends. After stalking him for a day, Clarence finds out that they are indeed his real friends and wishes he could be at two places at once. I wish I was hugging up in there. And so gets one of Sumo's friends to basically cosplay as Clarence and have a walkie-talkie glued to him so he can speak through him. He sets up a prank so he and Sumo can bond, but it goes wrong and actually aids the class rather than harming it. And Mr. Moser even takes a picture of Sumo and his friend to put on the BFF wall. Yikes. Clarence's plan is interrupted back at normal Aberdale, but Jeff tells him that summer starts in a day, and so he'll get to see Sumo uninterrupted all the time, and he'll always have him, which is a really sweet moment. School gets out, and the boys catch up to Sumo, who offers Clarence to cut his last hair.
They look at Aberdale West for the last time until next school year and see the bulldozer from the first episode of the season still unmanned smash right through the building, revealing Miss Baker and Mr. Dozer kissing. Well, there we go. A happy ending for everyone. The end. So that's the story of Clarence from beginning to end. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment what show you want us to cover next. And remember, what did we learn today, boys and girls? Don't approach Gilbert, ever. See you next time. Okay, so that's it. Clarence really is an underrated series. Kind of regret not watching it much when it first aired on Cartoon Network. Thank goodness for streaming services or other places where you can look at it for free. This video made me want to go get chicken nuggets. So I'm about to go on a McDonald's run. Probably get like a 10 piece with some sweet and sour sauce. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment your favorite dipping sauce down below. Until next time, I'm Tsunami. Thanks for watching.